Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Side by side comparison, we are comparing two 4K monitors. One is an IPS panel, one is a TN panel. Can you see the differences? We're going to take a look at both. First, both of these monitors have been previously reviewed on my channel. Links to those reviews will be in the video description below, as well as both of these monitors will be linked to both Amazon and Newegg, by all means, if you want to go check them out. Now, this monitor here is a 32 inch Acer IPS 4K panel. Absolutely gorgeous. On the date I filmed this review, it's roughly $600. Prices vary and change, go check them out. But this is a wonderful value for $600 for a 32 inch IPS panel. 100% sRGB color reproduction. It is fully featured, it's a great screen. This monitor is an ASUS 28 inch TN panel, also 4K. It does not have the same color reproduction as the Acer, as the, uh, um, Acer 32 inch, but it's pretty good. In terms of TN panels that I've used, it's one of the best TN panels I've used because I've used some pretty bad ones. This is a pretty good one. This monitor, when I first reviewed it, was $500, but the price has recently dropped, and on the day I filmed this video, it was $410 on Amazon. Again, prices vary, check out the prices. So there's a $200 price difference between these monitors. Can you tell the difference? Well, first disclaimer, what are you watching this video on? Are you watching it on a smartphone or tablet? Are you watching it on a, on a cheap, inexpensive TN display? Well, then you probably won't be able to see the difference here. You'll simply have to take my word for it. If by chance you have access to a high quality display, the display on an Apple iPad, for example, is a very good display. Or you have a good IPS screen that has good color reproduction that will show you the difference of these two monitors. Now, I'm going to step out of the frame here so you can see the monitors without me standing here. I have got Grand Theft Auto V loaded. We're just standing in the middle of the street in the middle of the day so you can see the colors. These monitors are currently facing the camera more or less straight on. Now I do have lights on the monitors at a 45 degree angle. There are lights, just to be absolutely clear, at a 45 degree angle here. So it is going to be affected slightly by that, but putting that issue aside, they look pretty good. Is there a difference? Yes, I can see a difference. Can you see a difference? Again, it depends on what you're watching. Now, I'm going to turn the monitors to show you the viewing angle. The first monitor I'll turn is the IPS panel. Again, I have lights. I'm actually turning the monitor towards the light. But the same will be true of the other one. I am turning this to about a 45 degree angle. That's about a 45 degree angle to the camera. How did the colors change? How did the brightness change? Well, let's take a look at this one, shall we? I will come over to this side and I will do the same thing here. I will turn this again towards the same light source, well, a different light source, but the same brightness. The lights, by the way, are set to the same height and the same angle towards the table to make this a fair competition. So I'm going to turn this to about the same, let me see if I can get, there we go, 45 degree angle. How does it look now? Can you see a difference? You should be able to, I can. I can see the difference looking at my small three and a half inch LCD screen on my video camera. The color reproduction and the contrast of the TN panel is greatly different than the IPS. This is one of the great benefits of IPS versus TN is viewing angle. That Acer 32 inch screen, 178 degree viewing angle. It's very good even at off angles. I'll turn it a little bit more. You see now you're seeing the reflection directly from the light. I can't turn it quite that much or it's pointless. There we go. This one, I'll turn just a bit more. Let's see if I can turn it without getting, I'm actually hitting the computer behind it. Let me step over here. I'm actually gonna walk towards the camera so I can look at the images themselves. I don't know about you, but the difference to me is night and day. Look at the sky, look at the blue of the sky and tell me what you see. In fact, I'll give the TN panel a little bit of help here. I'll even turn it back just a bit. Now, as I turn it back, you may see it turn a little bit more blue. This is just the viewing angle issue. If you look at a TN panel straight on, it's not so bad. See how it turns blue again and it goes away? The IPS panel is generally gorgeous all the way across. This is part of what you're getting with an IPS panel. And of course, better, better color reproduction in general. So what advantage does the TN panel have over the IPS panel? 
faster response time. This ASUS is a gaming monitor. It has a one millisecond response time. This is not a gaming monitor and it has a six millisecond response time. Will you notice? Everybody's different. I don't. I honestly can't tell any difference in terms of my input and controls of this game between these two monitors. I fully am aware that some people can and that's fine. But before I started this video, I sat here with the keyboard and mouse and I played for about five minutes in front of each, I moved it over and I played in front of each monitor to try to figure out, can I see any difference in terms of playability, input lag, how the controls work? I didn't see much. Furthermore, you may be wondering what I'm running these monitors on. Behind this monitor is the $720 CyberPower PC that I previously reviewed on my channel and done a ton of videos on. It has an AMD RX 480 dedicated gaming graphics card that both of these monitors are plugged into. Furthermore, this monitor has FreeSync or Adaptive Sync. It is turned on in the driver. These are not connected through a splitter box. They are connected directly to the video card into separate DisplayPort inputs. They are both running at native 4K resolution. Adaptive Sync is turned on there and it's well, it's not an option on the Acer IPS panel. Windows has the displays set to clone within Windows. Performance wise, this is a $200 graphics card running Grand Theft Auto V at 4K. Now they're cloned. We're at 60 frames a second. What's the settings for those of you who are going to be curious? Let me show you. I'm actually quite impressed. Settings, graphics, graphics. There we are, full screen 1080p, uh, excuse me, 1080p, 2160p, 4K. Now, FSAA, uh, all anti-aliasing is turned off. V-Sync is turned on to make it prettier. Population density, population variety, and distance scaling are all turned to the max. And almost all the details are set to high. High texture, high shader, high shadow, high reflection, high, um, MSAA reflection is off, water quality. This isn't even normal. We're playing on an RX 480, four gigabyte card, not an eight gigabyte RX 480, and we're getting 60 frames a second in Grand Theft Auto V at 4K cloned to two 4K screens. I actually didn't expect that, and I'm only mentioning it because I am definitely gonna follow up with some 4K reviews on that computer because this is remarkably playable at 4K and I didn't actually think it would be. I do play at 4K, by the way, at home. I have one of these at home. Um, this is, I recently bought another because the price dropped to about $600, but I have a GTX 1080 at home thinking that I had to have a GTX 1080 to play it. I've benchmarked 1080s, I've benchmarked 1070s. This is the first time I've run Grand Theft Auto V 4K on anything but a 1080. I haven't tried it, and I should have. Lesson learned. Fair enough. Look for upcoming videos with 4K testing on an RX 480 because that's... Let me come back to the... Uh, let me hit escape. Oh, out of range. There we go. That's gorgeous. Okay, now we're at 50 frames a second. It's not perfect, but it's playable. Anyway, this video is not about Grand Theft Auto V. This video is about the monitors, so enough about that. But it, it's remarkably impressive. Tilt. Now, when I tilt these up, you're going to get some reflection off the lights. But I want to show you the comparison of tilt. You see a difference? Well, this one is getting some of the light up this light box up here is reflecting a little bit. What if I tilt them down? Let's see how well that does. I'll go over here. I'm doing all this in front because if I stand behind the desk, you can't see me. That actually doesn't tilt down any more than that. That's, that's as far down as that tilts. So tilt's not bad, but you generally don't tilt the monitor all that much. There's one final point I wish to make. $600, 4K. 
$400 4K. $200 savings, right? Do you notice any other difference between these monitors? Oh yeah, 28 inch and 32 inch. In the video, which I actually filmed the same night I'm doing this, of the unboxing and overview of my um, Acer 32 inch 4K monitor, I made the comment that in terms of value for the money, it was the deal. It's $200 more, but it's an IPS and it's 32 inches in size, it's huge. If you want to play at this resolution, I think you should be on 32 inch. Frankly, at 28 inch, I think 1440p is enough just because of the size and, and whatnot. Now I'm going to do more than Grand Theft Auto V in this video. Hang on, don't go anywhere. Don't rush off to the comments just yet. I'm going to close this game. And I'm going to show you some color images and color patterns so you can see something that's not a game. And we're back. This is a test image that I found online. This is an sRGB test image that is designed to have a wide variety of colors to show what images, photos, etc. looks like. If you are planning on doing any type of image work, video work whatsoever, you should be on an IPS panel and this is why. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn these screens to an angle and I will come over here and do the same this way. And I'm not even doing a harsh angle. This is maybe a 30 degree angle. I mean, I'm not measuring it, but that's about 30 degrees. Let's see how this looks. I'm gonna come stand by the camera and take a look. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I can see a difference. Now, visual perceptions are personal. Again, let me remind you, how this looks depends on what device you're looking at. If you're looking at this on a poor quality screen, you may not see any difference, but that's the fault of your screen, not the monitors. Let me take them a bit further. Let me take them back to 45 degrees. And we'll see how that goes. Wow. I don't even have to walk over there to see the difference. I can just see it in the small um, LCD screen on my camera from across here. That's the difference between IPS and TN. Now you might be saying, but I don't look at my monitor at an angle. I look at it straight on. Fair enough. Fair enough. If that's not important to you, then maybe it doesn't matter. Let me, uh, I turned this far enough that I adjusted the base. There we go. Do I have that right? There we go. I want to make that fair. Let's look at another color swatch. Can you see any differences? Maybe, maybe not. One more. How about that one? Just for fun, I'll go ahead and turn this one back so you can see the difference. And I'm doing these as live tests rather than just showing you images or screenshots because I think live tests are the most valuable. How does that look? Do you see a difference? IPS TN. Whether or not you can see a difference is, of course, entirely up to the device you're watching and how sensitive you are personally to the differences between IPS and TN. These monitors, by the way, both excellent. As I showed in the individual reviews, these have wonderful height adjustments, uh, swivel adjustments, tilt adjustments. Same thing with the ASUS. Of all the TN panels I've ever reviewed, this is so nice. If you don't have 600 or maybe you don't want a big monitor, maybe you just, you want a smaller monitor because of space restrictions, fair enough. And you want to get a 4K because you want to watch Ultra HD, you want to watch 4K YouTube videos. I film my videos in 4K, so if you have a 4K screen, you can watch me in 4K. That's not a bad monitor. I will say that personally, I can't stand TN after using IPS, but that's a personal preference. Whether or not that's important to you, personal preference. I'm trying to give you some information to help you make a better decision to spend your hard-earned money because most people can't afford to go out and buy multiple copies of different monitors and put them side by side and play with them and test them. Did you like this video? Click like. Did you not? You know what to do. Remember to subscribe to my channel. It's that big huge red button right down there. If you have already subscribed, thank you. And if not, please do so now. Besides other interesting side-by-side -side comparisons, how-to guides, hardware unboxings, reviews, such as fun monitors like these, I will definitely be testing some upcoming games on that CyberPower PC in 4K because I was genuinely impressed at how well Grand Theft Auto V ran at 4K. What can I say? I'm absolutely welcome to learn new information.
Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below and check out the video description below. Links to the reviews of both of these monitors as well as the links to Amazon and Newegg for both monitors. Go check them out. Depending upon what you're looking for, they're both very high quality monitors and in their respective categories, I would recommend both. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.